February 1, 1943, 15,000 feet above Tunisia. What happens in the next 17 seconds will break every rule of physics. A German fighter slams into this American bomber, cuts it literally in half, and then the German pilot dies on impact, but his dead body is now inside the American plane and is somehow keeping it flying. Ten Americans who should be dead, one dead German, a plane that should be falling like a rock, but instead they fly home together. NASA still cannot explain how this is physically possible, and by the end of this video, neither will you. This is the most impossible survival story in aviation history, and every single word is true. It starts with Lieutenant Kendrick Bragg, 21 years old, at the controls of All-American 3, leading his crew home from what should have been a routine bombing run. Mission accomplished, bombs away, target destroyed, Ten young Americans thinking they are going home. They have no idea they are about to become part of the most impossible survival story ever recorded. Two Messerschmitt BF 109s from Jagdgeschwader, 53. The legendary Ace of Spades squadron are climbing fast. The lead fighter, Feldwebel Erich Paxia, age 23. 16 confirmed kills. Paxia's mission was this. Use the new German tactic. Come straight at the bombers where their guns can't reach. It's devastatingly effective, but it requires perfect timing. One mistake means certain death. The Americans fire first. Bullets streak through the sky. The lead German fighter takes hits and spirals down, but Paxia keeps coming. 400 miles per hour closing speed, guns blazing. Then American bullets find Paxia. He slumps forward, dead or dying. His fighter rolls inverted and impact. The BF-109's wing slices through the B-17 like a massive blade. The fighter disintegrates, but pieces of Paxia's cockpit are now welded into the American bomber's structure. What you are looking at should be impossible. The left horizontal stabilizer completely gone. The fuselage cut almost in half, only twisted metal spars and some aluminum skin holding the tail section on. But here's what makes engineers' heads spin. Pieces of Paxia's fighter, including parts of his cockpit with his body still inside, are now acting as structural support and counterweight. The dead German pilot is now, impossibly, helping to keep the American bomber airborne. Put yourself in Lieutenant Bragg's position right now. Your plane is literally cut in half. You are 300 miles from home over enemy territory. Do you bail out and hope for the best? Or try to fly this death trap home? Tell me what you'd do in the comments. In the isolated tail section, Sergeant Sam Sarpolis, the tail gunner, is now completely cut off from his crew. No communication, no floor beneath his feet, just a twisted metal cage hanging by a prayer. Up front, Lieutenant Bragg made the decision that would echo through aviation history, cutting through the shattered intercom, or perhaps simply through the sheer force of his will, his message was clear, we're going home. The crew dons parachutes, not to bail out, but as insurance, because they are about to attempt the most impossible flight in aviation history. What happens next? breaks every law of aerodynamics. The tail section is oscillating like a flag in hurricane winds. Every control cable severed except one elevator wire. But somehow, Lieutenant Bragg maintains control using the autopilot system from the Norden bomb site. Electric wires where mechanical cables failed. The rest of the formation realizes what's happening. They slow down, forming a protective shield around their crippled comrade. When two more German fighters attack, the gunners on All-American fight back. Even Sarpolis in the isolated tail, firing short bursts because the recoil is actually steering the plane. For two hours and 18 minutes, the All-American limps across 300 miles of hostile territory. Every mile of victory, every minute a miracle. Every turn has to be made slowly, too sharp, and the tail will twist off completely. 
The crew knows that any sudden movement could tear the aircraft apart, but Lieutenant Bragg keeps flying, not because he's fearless, but because 10 American lives depend on his skill, his judgment, and his absolute refusal to give up. And in the back, Sergeant Sarpolis, wounded and isolated, stays at his post, his weight actually helping balance the damaged aircraft. Biskra Airfield, Algeria. 4.20 p.m. local time. Ground crews cannot believe what they are seeing through their binoculars. It looks like two aircraft flying in formation. Then they realize it's one plane cut nearly in half, somehow still airborne. The landing is textbook perfect. As the bomber rolls to a stop, ground crews sprint toward the aircraft. The ambulance races alongside. Then something miraculous happens. All 10 crew members walk away, not a single serious injury. But the moment the engine shut down and the weight shifts, the tail section collapses. The All-American had held together just long enough to bring her boys home. But this story has another side that we cannot forget. Feldwebel Erich Paxia, the German pilot, was 23 years old, someone's son. Younger than most of the American crew, he had been trying to kill. That same day, another B-17 called Flaming Mamie was destroyed by Paxia before he hit the All-American. Seven American airmen died. Three became prisoners of war. War does not choose heroes and villains based on nationality. The cost of freedom is always measured in young lives cut short. Modern computer simulations confirm what seemed impossible in 1943. The embedded wreckage from Paxia's fighter actually provided critical structural support and counterweight. The dead German pilot's aircraft literally helped save the American crew. Enemy and ally united in an impossible moment of physics and fate. Boeing engineers later said the all-American survival proved the B-17's legendary toughness. But they also admitted this level of damage should have been catastrophic. What happened over Tunisia was a one-in-a-million combination of physics, engineering, and sheer human will. The All-American was repaired and returned to service, flying until nearly the end of the war. But she's forever remembered for this one impossible flight that proved the power of human determination. Every crew member survived the war. Lieutenant Bragg became a commercial airline pilot. Sergeant Sarpolis, Lonesome Sam as he was nicknamed after this mission, returned to Michigan and started a farm. When they met at reunions decades later, they never called it luck. They called it what it was, 10 young men who refused to quit when quitting seemed like the only option. If this impossible story gave you chills, smash that like button and hit subscribe, because history is full of moments that seem impossible until someone proves they're not.